I do believe very much in, in commissioning new music, yeah, and especially American music. I think it's important that we um, produce our own music and that we take pride in our own music. For Mendelssohn Club, we're interested in the large chorus as a performing ensemble being sustained throughout the, you know, the 21st century and beyond. I heard about the choir and I know that they have an incredible reputation for commissioning, um, working, being really adventurous, which isn't always the case in, in music. Julia Wolfe is a wonderfully creative uh, mind. One can see that in the tremendous variety of pieces that she has written. And Julie said from the beginning that uh, with a commission she would really like to uh, write also for our large chorus and the uh, Bang on the Can All-Stars. I'm sure very, if it started with, let's say, you know, writing a 10, 15 minute piece, it very quickly snowballed into, I've got to write an evening length piece, I need to put the choir with the Bang on the Can All-Stars. I mean, to have a live composer to to be there in the process of bringing a piece to, to life is, uh, I think, just one of the most exciting things we can do. I was born in Pennsylvania, a um, small town, and um, just grew up in the Philadelphia area. As a teenager, young adult, I did a lot of playwriting, poetry writing, and that was where I would say my strength. And so in a way, I think I came through to music from storytelling, writing with words. Um, and I think in a lot of ways it informs my music, this kind of idea that there's a, not necessarily a narrative, but some kind of gestalt or image or uh, extra musical idea in almost every piece I've written. And uh, yeah, so I guess I'm a storyteller with music. She's written a lot of instrumental music, a lot of string music, and music that is, um, I would say, hard-edged and a little bit rock and roll, driving rhythms, and not the, not the style that one usually associates with chorus. There's a certain part of me that thinks, if you're going to say something, say something. And a lot of times people will meet me and they say, well, you seem sort of chill. Um, doesn't seem like you would write that piece. Uh, I, I almost always am thinking about the, the physical effort or the kind of movement involved in um, what it takes to make sound. I think we were really lucky to get her started on this commission uh, when we did because she has lots of big important commissions. I've been working um, in particular on these narrative or somewhat narrative uh, pieces, musical pieces that um, to take a look at the American worker um, in different contexts. This piece is uh, using as its textual basis the, the songs and stories of the uh, anthracite coal miners. Well, the piece is called Anthracite Fields. Anthracite Field is the landmass in this area of Pennsylvania that's close to where I'm from, about an hour north of Philadelphia. And to go into the city, which is, of course, the exciting thing to do, um, you would drive down a small country road and then you get to Route 309 and you would head south. But if you took 309 and you headed north, which I almost never did, you would wind up in this region. So once I thought of that area, I started to read about it. And what's interesting about it to me too is there's this history that's there. And so I thought, well, um, what is this history? I don't, I don't know anything about it. We went down to the mines, which was fantastic. They take you down and you go, you know, pretty deep, several hundred feet down, I think. And it's beautiful. It's this black, shiny stuff that's in the earth. You know, it's, it's just walls and walls and tunnels that are incredible looking. on the same level. This was the second level down, not like an open level like this. It was the next level down, which is really closed in 
He was standing on the side and the engine came through, jumped the rails, pinned them against the wall, and he slowly boiled to death. They couldn't move the engine, they couldn't pull him away, and he cooked, he cooked to death. And by the there way, are well, millions of stories, like lots of people, lots of issues. So it was a little overwhelming at first, but the thing that caught my interest immediately were the oral histories. So a lot of the books written were, um, you know, first-person accounts of what life was like. But I had to make choices, so I started to just find these threads that were interesting to me. And those threads became movements. I found this, like, index um, list of names of all of the names of people who were in mining accidents in this region in Pennsylvania. The, the list is hor horrifying. I mean, it's a really long list, lots and lots of names. So I just narrowed it down to the Johns with one-syllable names because it's very stark and very simple to sing. If you're singing just like John Ash, John Ayers, John Bates, John Bates. So I combined the list of those names with um, some of the language used to describe how coal is formed. So this kind of idea of foundation, that, the, that these men uh, were the foundation and then that there was an actual physical ge geological foundation. It's kind of poetic phrases like um, the briny seas rose and fell, thick roots and branches buried deep in the earth. persevered and made a life and, and worked hard and it's fueled the nation. I mean, this anthracite coal fueled the nation. And who are these people? The younger guys would had this job, they would be the breaker boys, and so they would have this job of sitting in the breaker, which was this big structure where they, the coal came shooting down these, these kind of um, chutes, I guess, yeah, came, came running down the chutes, and they'd have to sit there and pick out the stuff that wasn't coal, pick out the slate. And there is the breaker boys, and with their hands they are picking out rocks which are dull and gray, and coal is black and shiny. No crops. You cannot work fast enough with clubs. Hmm? Pick out 200 bucks a day. Rip the skin off your finger. Right now I'm working on the breaker boys section and just playing with boyness of uh, kind of tickety rhythms uh, and combining that with a kind of sing-song rhyme that belongs to kids. <laughs> became obsessed with Lewis Hines' phot photographs of um, amazing documentation, capturing that, that child's face and um, their hands. I, I definitely have the feeling I'd like to honor them. And, um, and the one way of honoring them is I'd like to show the difficulties of the life and difficulties of the industry, but also the honor of the work. Part of um, the way they're developing the project is we're, we're, I'm writing this piece, they're going to perform this piece, but then they're reaching out to the community in different ways. And so um, there are different aspects to the project that are bigger than just the piece itself. And um, so uh, there, there's, a, I guess, kind of a team, of, um, a collaborative team. Part of the process is the storytelling process that First Person Arts is helping us with. We will get stories from the coal miners and from the families of the coal miners in that area. And from this, she will make uh, a text, a libretto for the piece. With the sound of men coughing at night because of the black lung, you know. 
Um, despite all of the difficulties and the trials and tribulation, the spirit of the people is is what is so inspiring. And this I, is I all very, very interesting in that it uh, it expands one's creative family. World Cafe Live is uh, helping us arrange uh, collaboration with at least one high school in the area. Our aim was to connect what Julia Wolf is working on in composing and creating anthracite fields to the students and their lives and what they're working on here at school. So we worked with two U.S. history classes and the two music electives, introducing them to some history about coal mining, to some of the stories and struggles that miners experience, particularly in the anthracite region of Pennsylvania, and tying that uh, to the music class. And the, the classes here are really learning the basics of playing instrumental music and playing different genres and styles of song. So we explored the history, we asked students to start writing, writing poetry, writing song lyrics, writing raps. We took the writing, we brought the writing to the music classes, and what we're now doing is creating about an eight minute like musical suite. If I pull the band down like this, then it makes the band sound tiny. As we look to push the boundaries, of, uh, what, what, of what we consider classical music, classical concert music, um, th that uh, can be done by collaborating with um, like dance groups, uh, other choruses, orchestras of different kinds, chamber orchestras, new music ensembles. Basically, during that time, you can reach just like you're catching a ball. I love this kind of collaborative project, first of all. So I'm, I know it will all come together. I've, I've real, I'm even at, in this time frame, I know it will, and it's going to be amazing. They're going to move. They're not going to stay in one place. They're going to they're have a simple but specific choreography of where they go in the space. In the first section, it's called Foundation, and a lot of that piece is about the forming of coal. So it's this pressure you feel the the musically it's kind of it feels like this and then it opens up and there's the element of water that comes in and and, and then they're silent for a while and at that point there's a what just like a very simple wave through the chorus It's not about how much movement they do, it's kind of the, the, this whole picture we're creating as a team. So the choir members will be wearing um, pretty much all black, um, except for this tunic that I will be uh, making that is a print. These are the tunics, they will be made out of this material, which is a uh, linen. This is what that print will look like once it's a tunic. So it'll be layers of coal that are kind of collaged on top of each other, um, and it'll be scaled up and look very textural. The singers are enjoying working on it. I think the singers also are feeling the pressure of can we learn this in the amount of time we have to learn it? But I think the singers are, are fairly excited about the prospects of what the outcome could be. I think it's going to be a really powerful piece. I have no idea what, how the audience is going to react. I think they're going to be pretty blown away. I really can't wait to hear what the Bang on a Can All-Stars are going to be doing. I have a feeling that from the audience's perspective, it's going to be mind-blowing. I'm loving it because it's a new piece, you know, I always get very excited about seeing a new piece of music and, and being, being part of bring it, bringing it to life. I mean, there's nothing more exciting. Well, I just heard, in, in a way, heard uh, movements for the first time. And when I'm in my little studio, I forget how beautiful that sound is, you know, I mean, I'm, amazed at just the collection of voices and what the, the unified whole makes. 
Well, once you hear it, you feel less anxious. I think before I walked in the room, I was probably a little more like, well, we'll see what happens. Um, but once you hear it, you say, okay, you know, everybody's getting it. And there are challenges. The rhythms are tricky. Um, and trickier than I thought in a way. I think that it will be an interesting challenge to put this many people, this many singers with this amplified band. I think we'll just do our own little sound, soundy sound check. Sorry. No, you, you can walk through, it doesn't matter. It's been a process putting it all together and tonight will be really, really great to, to finally put together with the choir. She's been meeting with everybody individually throughout the past several months and tweaking the music and finally putting it all together. The collaborative process of it is what is so often so interesting to me and the fact that she uses the musicians for what they can do well and I think you'll see that especially with the percussion and the guitar and these bicycle wheels you know things that are special to this ensemble. Julie always is really great about uh, describing the kind of sound world that she wants and cello and bass in particular she always asks for kind of like a gritty earthy sound um, so I'm doing a lot with overtones and moving the bow to different places um, between the bridge and the fingerboard, getting s sometimes a metallic sound, um, a lot of tremolo and sort of gritty sound. I wanted to shimmer and be, and, and be scary, and, and so I started pulling out things. I pulled out my kitchen whisk and the handle, wiggling on the strings and reverb, and, and suddenly she's going, yeah, 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 and what if, what if we did this? And then I go, and she, oh, that's it, that's it. What are you doing? What are you doing? And I describe what I'm doing, and she scribbles it down, and oh, that's fantastic. Okay, let's go on to the next section. It's a thrilling thing because essentially they're sounds I would never necessarily make, but she's asking me to find these things, and, uh, and so I find them. You know, so it's a, a wonderful back and forth. Are all the sopranos back in that corner now? Okay. Okay, more. let's put all the sopranos back there on the other side. It's always a joy to, uh, when a, a whole bunch of voices are joined together. Uh, the esprit de corps of a, of a good chorus, there's nothing like it. So it's not only the sound, it's the energy that you receive. I'm most excited that we get to work with so many people uh, for this collaboration and that and also that it's staged because you know we don't we don't typically do a lot of staged works um, where we're in costume or where we have the lighting or a hundred piece choir or the you know images floating in the background. Some of what we're bringing together is historical footage that's um, from old archive films. Some of it's stuff that we shot uh, around the Pennsylvania area, and then um, there's some photos of Lewis Hine. Um, so we kind of have a, a ambience in the room that's mostly candle lit um, with some additional lighting, but it's, the idea is to let it feel light and airy, but also be dark and, you know, somewhat ominous. I mean, I think it really is essential that you be able to see your music for this. Yeah. I, let's, let's start with two lights. brought everything out and with the photographs in the background it was just like you were in a trance and, and everything was transformed and it was perfect.
think that music elevates and honors the work of these people. And I feel like they're my people. And I, 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 I'm just so overwhelmed that they have been honored and celebrated and remembered. I also thought bringing it to the present with the appliances today and what we do without thinking of it um, and the fact that coal is still used to power most of the U.S. better than a movie. Uh, very emotional. I, I had to fight back the tears. I mean, it was very emotional to me. It was amazing. Amazing piece of music.